Welcome, everyone. We've got a lot of people here today. This is great. This is great. This is awesome. Uh, today um, we've got a. I'll, I'll be uh, presenting, talking about um, Dabble. Uh, we're going to cover just getting started um, things. Uh, we've got a, a lot of trialists and people who are just starting with Dabble on the call today. Uh, we also have a bunch of people who have been using Dabble for a while and uh, are looking to get a little more, uh, a little more out of their uh, out of their subscription, a little more uh, tips and tricks. And so I'll share uh, I'll share some of those things as well. Uh, we have a bunch of um, employees uh, on on the call as well that can answer questions as we go. I'll try and keep an eye on things, um, Robert. If you can. Uh, Slack me. I've got my phone open, uh, so you can message me if there's anything uh, just to uh, call out. Uh, because there's, uh, you know how it is presenting. You know that you've got your focus on Dabble, and then there's the chat, and it's hard to uh, to keep it all going at once. Um, and let me uh, let me resize my screen so that as we do this, uh, Dabble's at a more visible. Um, resolution it shows up easier for everyone let's see and uh, i apologize if we do have any technical difficulties this is uh, my first time using uh, demio which is the platform that we're, we're presenting with today so um, uh, the we're we plan on presenting probably the, all the basics in half an hour uh, and then we'll do we'll go into some extra tips and tricks um, for another 15 minutes and leave the last 15 minutes for questions. So hopefully we can have this all wrapped up in an hour. Um, and I, I do want to get the basics out of the way in the first half an hour. Uh, I know there's some people who um, have to bail early because you know we're in the middle of the work day and uh, it's hard to uh, find the time, you know, lunch break or whatever. So. Um, this will be similar to the Jessica Brody webinar, although uh, we won't be focusing on the fast draft method. Uh, we'll just be talking about Dabble in, in general. So let's get going. Um, everyone can see my screen, I hope. And I only have one window open, so perfect. <clears throat> uh, this is Dabble. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, when you first log in, uh, let's actually do that. This is what you'll see. Uh, blank screen. Uh, we try and keep Dabble as simple as possible uh, and, and, and as easy and intuitive to use as, as, as we can. Uh, it's been great because most of our customers uh, have been able, writers can just hop in and, and explore and figure things out uh, in, a, in a matter of a few minutes, uh, but it can be daunting as well if, if uh, you like um, the, the handhold and to be able to be shown what to do. And that's what, uh, that's what today is about. Uh, when you get into Dabble, uh, the only thing you can do is to create a new novel. And so we'll do that. And that brings you right in. Uh, this is, this is, we're going to do zero to hero, uh, get you writing as quickly as possible. You'll have your, your book. It's formatted all automatically for you. You can give it a name. Um, let's say, I'm, I'm not sure what it's going to be called. Let's call it. Let's call it fantasy one. <laughs> fantasy one. Um, because I'm not sure. Uh, I'm not sure what I want it to be called. Then I can scroll down and start writing. Um, if I go back home, my book is there and I can create a new book. Uh, We'll call this one Pride and Prejudice. It's a new idea that I had. This one I've already written up. And it's by me, for sure. Not by anyone else. Uh, you can have a subtitle for your book as well. 
um, if you hit enter after that or, or click down there in the subtitle field. Dabble tries to uh, format everything for you so that you can just focus on the writing. You can give your chapters a name and it'll keep the, uh, the chapter number. And, uh, and we'll go over that in a second. But I wanted to cover this screen a little bit more. Um, if, you, uh, if you've got a bunch of empty projects that, that you don't need or an old one you don't use anymore, you can delete it. And once you, uh, you can also right click. All of these, uh, these three buttons are the action menus. And uh, for most of them, you can right click on and get the same, the same menu. So there's a tip that maybe a minute, uh, many of you didn't realize and didn't know. So if you, uh, if you like the right click button on your mouse, it makes it a lot easier because this click area is a lot bigger than that little one. Um, so uh, once you delete, once you delete a project, you don't want it anymore. And then you realize, oh my gosh, there was a scene in that project that was gold. What do I do? You can go into your trash project section and restore that project. Grab your your golden scene and uh, and and uh, do what you need. Or or if you just accidentally deleted the wrong project because you they were all called untitled and you deleted the wrong one by mistake, then you know it's it's there in the trash for you. Once once it's trashed and you know that you don't want it anymore, you can delete it permanently. Um, so let's go to Pride and Prejudice. A lot of you have already started a, a book or a novel of some sort, and you need to to get it into Dabble. Uh, the if if you want to uh, do it the long way, uh, you can create each chapter one at a time. Um, you can right click up over here at the three dots and click Add New Chapter, uh, and then you can go to each one and copy and paste scene by scene. Um, and that's that's one of the um, one of the differences between Dabble and Google Docs or Word, is that each scene is a document, and each chapter holds those scenes. If you add a new scene, you've got two scene documents in that chapter now. And if you look at the chapter, you can see those two scenes. So Dabble is all about um, breaking your story down into the into the small bites, and then still allowing you to see them as a whole. So I could look at the whole book and see all the chapters and scenes in my whole book, or I can go down to a single scene or just the chapter. Uh, this makes it great because you can focus in as much as you need, uh, or focus back out and, uh, and be able to, uh, to, to see, read the whole thing at once or, or just a single, a single piece. It also makes it easy so you can drag and drop items around. Now because these uh, have no content in them, let's, let's say uh, scene one, uh, the placeholders uh, made it look like they weren't changing, but now you can see, as you drag and drop, it changes changes everything in your book. Chapters are auto auto numbered, and so once once I've dragged chapter one after chapter two, it became chapter two. And chapter one and you drag it back again and now this is chapter two and this is chapter one um oh yeah we were going to do import first we'll, we'll get into let's we'll do some of this stuff in a second but let's go ahead and import uh because there's so many sources uh there's word there's google docs there's scrivener there's um uh open office there's a lot of different formats, uh, even a PDF that you might be able to, uh, that you might have your work in. Uh, we up, we uh, went for a copy and paste import first. This is my uh, pre-existing manuscript that I wrote all by myself. Um, it's original story. I've heard something about Jane Austen before writing a story like this, but this is this is mine. And uh, so if you if you come into uh, your first chapter or scene or even uh, into this into the chapter here, you can just hit uh, command paste if you're on Mac or control uh, control V uh, if you're on Windows or control uh, command V on Mac. 
Uh, you can also right click and paste and uh, and that will it will go through it takes a second um, I got the spinny wheel um, but what that will do is it will look for um, all of the all the words that say chapter one chapter two uh, it'll look for any uh, dot dot dots or uh, or hashtags uh, in order to find the scene splits and it will automatically split your your book into its multiple chapters and scenes now it it's not it's not brilliant and it couldn't tell that 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 first bit that i pasted was actually the name of the title uh, the name of the book so i can just go ahead and delete that when i delete something it'll send it to the trash here so you don't have to worry about accidentally deleting something it's always there for you and so now i've got my whole book in stable uh, it's all split up into chapters and scenes all nice and tidy so this one's in here and we could start editing that uh, i can come into my fantasy one let's uh let's call it a dark night uh, fantasy magic that's that's my subtitle that sounds really good right yeah uh all right so my fantasy book though it needs a prologue and so um in order to get a prologue let's throw some chapters here start to fill it out a bit um if i add a prologue prologue here uh, you'll see that it's labeled as chapter one and the first chapter in my book is chapter two i don't want that but if i hover over that chapter one i can toggle the chapter numbering off and once it's off then uh, then prologue is just is that spelt right no that looks right uh then uh, prologue then it becomes prologue and chapter one is chapter one uh, i mean it's it's auto numbered as chapter one, and I can give it a name. Um, first night. This is going to be a, a, a dark fantasy. Uh, so chapter one uh, shows up here above the, the title, um, and I can I can name my scenes. Uh, as you as you name things, you can name you can name it here or you can uh, rename the chapter here called the second night that, that'll confuse everyone on the first chapter and uh, but um, scenes you can give them a name as well to help you remember uh, what they're about either either beforehand or afterwards if if you uh, start typing um, it all began on a dark and stormy night that's not a great first sentence in a book but uh, you'll be able to get that preview here in the scene you can also uh, give it a name either by double clicking or right clicking and choosing rename scene and uh, that that name could be something uh, more descriptive like you know the beginning of the beginning or um, intro to characters Something like that. Uh, you know what? I decided I might not want the prologue, but I, all this great stuff that I could have written, I I don't want to throw away in case I do want the prologue. I'm going to decide on that later. So what you can do if you decide that you uh, don't want a scene or a chapter, so you can put it in your story notes. Um, let's actually create, and we'll talk about story notes more in a second, but let's create a folder called uh, Graveyard. We could call it deleted scenes or anything like that. Um, so I'll put the prologue into the graveyard. And then I can uh, keep a list of all those things that I might I might want to keep late for later. And, uh, and um, yeah, that'd be great. I, I want this to be the first night. So this is this is the basic uh, writing interface for Dabble. Uh, as you write there, you'll notice something. 
he ran from an unknown pursuer. As you write, uh, the, the sides and the everything fades out so that you can have, you can focus on just the words. Uh, you also have typewriter scrolling so that uh, as, you're, as you're writing, uh, hitting enter or going on to the next line, instead of the cursor going down to the bottom of the page, the page moves up. This lets you keep your hands on the keyboard, stay focused and seen, and you don't have to get to the bottom of the page and scroll up and get to the bottom of the page or just creep, creep your neck staring at the bottom of the screen the whole time. Uh, and so wherever wherever um, you put that cursor, that's the the line. You know that's where your eyes can can stay at. If you keep it at the top, in the middle, the bottom, it's it makes it uh, nice and easy. And Dabble always adds a bunch of uh, empty white space at the bottom of any scene or page that you're in, so that so that you can have that cursor, that that line, that typing as close to the top if you'd like. Now. Uh, if you want to use your mouse a lot to, uh, to delete stuff and things like that, but you're really liking that focus mode, you can uh, you can click this enter focus mode eyeball down here, and that'll keep you in focus mode as you write. And then if you move your mouse, delete something, edit, you can just keep writing and you can stay in focus mode. You also have this full screen toggle um, right now we're uh, sharing at full screen in the video so i won't i won't use this but but you can uh, you can enter and exit full screen from that as well so those are nice little view options down here um as you're as you're writing you'll also probably want to set some goals this goals and stats section will show you the uh, the amount of words that you've been writing over the last 30 days Super helpful to, uh, to keep you motivated to see when you've been lax to, uh, to try and beat your current goal, your last, your your highest bar. Um, our highest in the last thirty days is fifteen words. Is that that's from today, and so that's what I get to see here. Uh, one tip that many of you may not know is this last thirty days is for this project, but if you click that, it'll give you for all projects, so you can click on this to toggle between all the words if you're work, if you've been working on multiple projects at once uh, and you want to see your your stats for the last 30 days from everything or just this project to set goals you click on here uh, you might have a project wide goal uh, you because you want to count your story notes um, oftentimes you'll only want just to focus on your manuscript um, but because dabble can uh, have multiple books if you're writing a series for example something like that you can also set the goal for a specific book for example just the dark night let me turn off my phone um so there we go uh so let's say we want to write fifty thousand words uh, for this book save our changes and and uh, we've got 15 written so far we've got a lot left our total progress is zero percent we're not very far into our goal uh, let's make it a little let's say five thousand there we go oh my goodness let's say 500 i just want to see a percentage there there we go three percent yes I'm making progress by shortening my goals. Hey, that is one way to meet your goals if, uh, if you just make them really small. Um, so this will give you a, it'll track how, how far you are in your book. Um, it'll give you a nice, this, this blue bar will get bigger and bigger as you write more and more, as you get, uh, as you track your progress. Uh, this is great for your total project size. Um, if you already have written a bunch of words and you're trying, you're setting a goal for additional words, say I want to write 5,000 or 50,000 in addition to the 135 I've already written, then I can exclude that 135 and save it. And now my goal is 500 and my remaining is 500. 
it says I've written zero because I've written zero above and beyond the uh, <clears throat> the 135 that I started with. So now I can start from there. This is great if you want to do a NaNoWriMo <clears throat> and you want to write 50,000 words in November, but you've already got 20,000 words in your book, something like that. Uh, and speaking of NaNoWriMo, um, you'll also want to uh, to be able to set a deadline. Let's say um, I want to participate in Camp Nano, which is coming up in April next month. So I want to write 50,000 words by the end of April. Uh, and so I can set that target goal and that will give me how many, uh, how many words I need to write each day starting from now until April 30th to reach that goal. Uh, I've got 981 words uh, between now and then. Um, but, you know, I'm not going to be starting until, until April 1st. So what I can do is I can block off all the days before then. Oops, that's, that's yeah, the goal. There's a days off tab here. So let me go ahead and I can toggle all of these off by clicking on them all the way up until even today. And I save that. And that's going to be my goal starting April 1st, uh, or today's goal if I decide to cheat and start early and then assuming that I'm not going to write anything more till April 1st. Uh, you can also, if I, if you don't work on the weekends, you can take, you know, like, let's say I'm gonna, I don't write Sundays and Saturdays. I only write Monday through Friday. And Wednesday, I'm going to be celebrating my wife's birthday. So I shouldn't write them. So I'll take that off. That will give me an accurate count for the words that I need to write each day. So goals is very flexible, lets you be able to, um, to do a bunch uh, as far as uh, to, to calculate uh, the, your daily goal pretty accurately um, with, with the toggles and the things uh, that you can do. Uh, one trick, um, let's say, you know, you know, it's, it's NaNoWriMo. I'm going to write every single day, but there's always, especially in the November event, you've got, you've got, um, you've got Thanksgiving and, and other things. And, and sometimes you just can't write, you know, work goes long or whatever. Um, so even though, even though you're planning on writing every day, one tip is to just take a few days off at the end so that you can like let's say there I, pro, I maybe have like three or four days that that i might not be able to write that i might get behind so you can you can set that and that way as you start to write your goal's a little higher and you can you can get a little bit ahead and if you miss a day you can come in and you can say okay i missed a day i'm going to go ahead and mark it off you know, towards the end so that I don't finish on the 26th, you know, but, but I missed, I missed, uh, you know, the fifth. So I'm going to take that off and then that'll adjust my count, uh, should, should still be pretty accurate. And then you can just go through and, and every time you miss a day, you can take one off or you can leave them all on and just try and finish early, uh, if you want. But, uh, that's, that's a little, um, tip if to, to help you make sure that you stay on track when you know that, you know, life, life has things that, that happen and, uh, and you can't always plan on, on things, on, on, on what's going to happen. Make sure you can't always write every day. All right. So let's go ahead and get this extra book out of the way. Let's go ahead and talk about Dabble's plotting tools. Uh, now this is something that uh, a lot of uh, you that are pantsers, seat of the pants writers, um, might, be like, oh, okay, I can check out now. But it's important um, because uh, once you finish writing, you can still go back and you can set your, you can build up your plot after the fact, figure out what happened where, and uh, and be able to uh, to then um, uh, look at your story as a whole and figure out where it's weak, where it could be improved. Uh, plotting is important, whether you're a pantser or a planner or plotter, uh, and you, you do it in advance, it's important for everybody. Uh, you just, 
It just depends on whether you're doing it um, before or after or a mix of both. So uh, the plotting for Dabble, uh, we've, we have this um, feature called the plot grid. And the first column, these are your scenes in your book. And these are one-to-one -to, -one to your book. You'll notice if I add a new chapter and then come back, that shows up here. If I add a new scene, that shows up here. And I can even add new scenes in here and they show up over here. This scene is that scene. It's a, this card is a representation of that scene. And if I delete that scene, it deletes it from the book. Now, you'll notice it's not in the trash. Um, if, if the scene is completely empty, we try and just throw it away so that you don't have a trash full of empty scenes, uh, empty stuff. There's no reason to go back and restore something that's empty. Uh, but if you do have something in the scene, um, scene name, e even if it's just the title, a description, any writing in it, if you delete it, it does send it to the trash. It asks you, are you sure? And then you can always restore it from the trash. There it is. So uh, this is this first column represents the scenes in your book. So as you scroll down, you're going through the book. To the right, this is information that goes with those scenes. The, the row uh, is for that scene. And so this first row, let's, um, the, the originally I built this for uh, sub subplots um, or you know, other plot lines and things, but the, um, the great thing is that you can use it for anything that you want to track with your scene. So let's go ahead and call this one timeline. And we'll say, is this, something that spans like a year, we could say January, or if it's a matter like in the, the episode 24, it could go be a period of 24 hours, or it could be a date. Let's still go ahead and say Monday, because our story is going to happen over, over a week. And so we could have Monday, and this one will also be on Monday, money. And then, uh, and then this one will be on Tuesday. So we can track our timeline. We can also either clicking a plot point here or adding a new plot line here. Um, we can add new plot lines. And these can be for things like, uh, since this sounds kind of like a dark fantasy, um, we want to uh, we want to have clues and mystery. So let's go ahead and add a plot line for clues. And we can uh, point out like, uh, you know, the uh, glimpse of a handkerchief. And this handkerchief is going to come in, uh, in, be important later in the, uh, in the story. And let's see, found handkerchief. I'm not sure what yet, I'm still figuring out the story, but I know it's important. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, throw in a clues plot line and I can drop in red herrings and other clues in this line. Um, I do love a little bit of romance in any story though. I'm gonna, I'm kind of a sucker for that. So I'm going to uh, have a romance or yeah, I'll just call it romance. You could call it the love triangle or whatever. Um, and we'll say, he first meets her. I'm still working on names, so we'll keep it at, at those pronouns right now. Um, and then like, uh, let's see, misunderstand, misunderstanding and fight. We gotta have, gotta have a fight in there because it's, you know, par for the course. All right, um, oh, we gotta have our, our bad guy. Um, villain and he is plotting in the shadows now these are just uh titles to help me understand at a glance what what this piece is but i can go in here i can hit enter or click and uh, start typing uh keep putting information about you know what like in this case what that villain is doing let's say you know, he's starting to create his master plan. Uh, 
And I know some of you are here for the hidden tips and tricks. So I'll sh throw one of those out for right, right now. Um, if you hit, if you do an asterisk and a space, you can get a bullet point. So he wants world domination and he needs companionship. He's a lonely dictator. So uh, you can use dash uh, to hit to do the bullet point, uh, the asterisk. You can also do a one uh, to uh, to do a numeric one. Um, Dabble's great. Uh, you can you can do a four or five to get to to start later in the list. If, for example, you have a break between your list, uh, you can use a lowercase a, um, a lowercase b. Um, you can use Roman numerals. Let's see, and they can be the the capitalized Roman numerals as well. Um, I bet some of my employees didn't even know about that. Um, and I think I think that's all of the uh, bullet the styles that we have that are possible that I can think of. Anyway, um, so so that's. Uh, and that's all available in the plot card. You can have bullet points. Uh, if you end up running out of space, the plot card just expands. So you can keep you can keep writing in it and just scroll. So you can have a lot of information in here. Uh, you don't write your whole book in here. The um, you want your uh, your reader to be able to have some of that information. But uh, it's a it's a great place to to have all the notes for your scene for for your plot point. Uh, and uh, and so the scene, uh, this is also the same thing. You can have, um, you know, hero uh, starts off on a pirate ship. This is a pirate fantasy. So that's great. Uh, and then you've got you've got your plot kind of figured out. You can you can move things around. Oh, you know what? That needs to go there. Um, because the row is so important, all of these things uh, line up to the scene. If I move, let's go ahead and give this a name. Second scene for now, so that you can see it move. Because since the auto numbering happens right away, sometimes you uh, you don't notice that. So I'm going to move this down. Uh, see that auto numbering it made it a little hard to see that it changed, but because we gave it a name. Um, you see all of these plot cards, these plot points came with the scene. They're kind of attached to that scene. If I wanted them on chapter two, I'd have to rearrange things a little bit in order to, to make that happen. But actually, I don't. I just want to move scene chapter three, which was chapter two, back. So it's now chapter two again. So, uh, so the scenes, uh, they keep their plot points with them as much as possible so that you can rearrange things. Uh, but, and the reason why this is important is when you go to write that scene, we have these notes panel on the right. And the notes let, give you all of the, the, it gives you the scene notes, as well as all of the plot points that you have for that scene. And this allows you uh, to, to plot, for those who are plotters instead of pantsers, to, uh, to plot it all out in advance, as much or little as you want. And then as you start writing your scene, to be able to have access to those notes. You know, we've got our clues, we've got the villain, we've got our scene notes here. It starts off on a pirate ship that's right. Uh, you know, I need to, uh, let's see, he, he can't run too much from an unknown pursuer on a pirate ship. We're just gonna have to change that. Um, let's say, up the mast. There we go. So, oh, thanks, Robert. Uh, so this, that's that's how we um, that's how we can get everything uh, plotted. Um, one question is how to rearrange the columns, and you can do that in the left hand column just like you can with the manuscript. So uh, let's say the clues; those are kind of something that that I, I don't want, you know, front and center. Uh, it's more, maybe even the time, no, I do want the timeline, but it's, this is 
more of a villain, you know, this is more of a thriller than a romance. We'll put romance a little, a little further down, a little further over. So uh, I want this to, to be more of a villain um, clues, you know, thriller kind of a story mystery. Uh, there'll be a little romance on the side. Uh, another another um, way that you can use the plot, uh, if you click on plot, you'll see that you can create generic plot grids and plot grids for one of your books. Uh, if you right click and click add new plot grid, that's the, it'll add an, a generic plot grid. It's the same as adding clicking the plus here. And so a generic plot grid, the difference between that and your book plot grid is the lack of that left column for scenes. Uh, this, this plot grid that's um, for the book is tied to your book. If you delete a scene, it's going to delete it in your book. Uh, if you rearrange uh, this, this row here, um, it's going to do it in your book. It's like if I add a row here and click in plus here, it just added a new scene to chapter two. If I delete that row, I have to delete the scene first, make sure that I don't accidentally delete my scenes by clicking on the delete row, um, then I can do that. Uh, this works great for plotting your book scene by scene. However, if you're trying to plot an entire series, let's say I've got you know three books or seven books or whatever in a series, um, I don't wanna plot out every single scene in the book uh, for the whole series, I want a, a broader a broader perspective. So we can still have the same, you know, villain and romance, and maybe even some clues that are cross book. But we could say like book one and uh, give it a name and talk about what happens in that book, um, or maybe book one part one uh, and we can and we can go um, by book and part so this this gives you one part two this gives you all the flexibility to be able to do whatever you want it's not going to attach to your book or manuscript but you can play around with plot side plot ideas and uh, and figure out uh, how you want things to work across your series uh, you could also create a plot grid for an individual an individual scene that is maybe a key scene maybe you're at the end of your novel uh and it's you know you're trying to do that yeah that um storm the castle you know the the high tower surprise with that um that jessica brody talks about and save the cat writes a novel a little plug for that uh great book uh and so you might you might you know like um final scene you might just plot out the final scene and, and some of the things that you want to happen because there's a lot that happens in that so uh the um and and also uh if you don't want to tie it to a book you can still plot it out um as if it was going to be for the book and uh and then um once you know if, if you're feeling good about you know let's say this is um this is you know I know we have romance. Let's just call it love, so it's a little different, so we don't lose it when we drag it. But if you do, if you do uh, plot something out like this um, in a little more free flow structure, and then you want it in your book, uh, you can then drag that that plot line there. Uh, it won't have any gaps like we can leave here because it won't know what lines up with let what. But you can get it in there, and if if there are supposed to be gaps, then you can you can drag them and and uh, fill it out how you need it to be, so that so that it, um, something that you plotted outside of your novel can then be brought into your novel. But we already have a romance, so I just deleted it. Um, and finally, with the plotting, if you do want two for your let's get rid of the final scene for your book you can do that you can have more than one uh, you might do this if uh, maybe one plot grid is for kind of the main plotting stuff and this one might be for character arcs so we can say uh, um, you know what let's call our hero robert i'm gonna call him robert 
It's a great name, don't you think? Uh, so we're gonna, you know, start off um, week and ends up strong. This is the most generic arc you can get. How's he weak? You know, is he weak muscularly or does he not speak well with people? But we'll figure that out. That gets it in there. And then we've got the plot notes and and those plot points uh, show up even though they're in a separate plot grid. Um, we've got two plots with the same grid. Um, it's got the name. Let's go of the uh, of the book. Let's let's we can overwrite that character arcs. So there we go. Then we can have one for each of our characters. So there you go. That is plotting. Um, a couple more things just to point out is uh, you can look at the, the timelines or the uh, plot lines individually and see them in one flow and work on them. You can even look at your scene cards that way and look at them in one flow. Uh, and um, and so that's that can be helpful. Uh, one. Oh yeah, and then and then we'll get to story notes. Okay, and then uh, one more thing with plotting that may be helpful is uh, the manuscript view. This is not under plot; it's just it's manuscript. If you click on manuscript, it's going to show you all of your scenes in your manuscript. And let's go ahead and create a few more chapters in here. So it just wraps around from left to right, just like you'd read it in a book. Uh, if you've got multiple scenes, um, one thing that that this view can be super helpful is in with <laughs> is if you like to uh, do your book by scene and figure out later where the chapter breaks are going to be. Uh, you could you could, uh, for example, just use this plus button at the in the story in the plot grid and keep adding scenes, and they'll just add it to the last chapter, whether it's chapter one, if you don't create any chapters and you just go to the plot grid first, or chapter eight in this case. Um, so you could create a book full of all the scenes that are gonna happen and then come to manuscript and start inserting those chapter breaks. And then if you you know, decide it's not quite where it needs to be, you can adjust them. And so that's, that's uh, one of the things that the manuscript view is really great at uh, if, uh, is, is to be able to uh, adjust the chapter breaks easily as well as see your, your whole book um, without the plot lines, just the scenes in one view. And you can also see your series that way if you've got multiple books. Um, they'll keep, they'll just, they'll just add at the end there. So it'll split it up. So it's a great bird's eye view. Um, it's not as in depth of, the, of plotting uh, as the plot section is. But that manuscript view does help you see uh, everything in your manuscript at a bird's eye view, which could be very helpful. All right, story notes. Story notes, when you first uh, get into Dabble, you'll notice it looks like uh, we've gone a little over on the basics. So I'll try and hurry it up so we can uh, get the questions in. Um, we've got characters and world building is what it starts off with. A lot of you may have felt like that's what that's what Dabble has and that's it. But that was uh, characters and world building is just a suggestion. Story notes is a flexible area for all of your notes. Uh, and you can create any folders that you want. You can rename characters to magic system if you'd like and throw that into world building. Um, you can world building is something that um, sci-fi and fantasy use a lot. Uh, so this one happens to be a sci-fi or a fantasy, I mean, uh, but you could change this to, um, you know, family or um, the the precinct uh, or, uh, you know, any anything that you want. You can uh, throw in a lot of different notes. Um, and so let's go ahead and put this back to characters because characters are pretty much in every novel. and. We'll change this to pro tag. Let's just call it good guys. Instead. 
Okay, so we're gonna have, oops, we're gonna have all of our good guys and bad guys. Let's get rid of some of this stuff here because it's looking a little confusing for me. Yep. Note, there we go. We're gonna have a bunch of good guys and a bunch of bad guys. Um, and let's call this guy, this is Robert, who we decide we're gonna have, and this is gonna be Sally. Um, there's a, there's a field, Dabble, Dabble works with, uh, the formatting, it has separate fields. So the, the top here is the, uh, the name of the note, it's the, the header field. And then below that is the note field. So you can hit enter or just click, click down here in that space and start typing you know, Sally like sweets. Um, she is friends with Robert. One thing that I would like to be able to do is make this more like a wiki where I can kind of have everything connected together. So what I can do is I can click on Robert, uh, select his, select the URL in the browser, copy that. And when I come to Sally and I select his name, I can click the link button and I can paste that in there and hit enter. And now I've got a link that will go to Robert. We want to be able to link Robert to Sally as well. So I'm gonna copy Sally's URL and come in here. And uh, Robert is in love with Sally. You know what? Instead of copying and pasting, I'm gonna actually just going to drag Sally's name in here and there. That does the same thing. So um, now I can click back and forth between the two of them. And so dragging dragging people's names in, we didn't want to put that right between inside of Robert. That, that uh, is a shortcut instead of copying and pasting. If uh, you have the desktop app, uh, that might be something that actually people didn't know about. Um, if you go to Dowelwriter, dot com slash downloads there is a desktop app that you can download for mac and for windows it is the exact same thing oh um i just typed it into the browser but i'm only sharing one tab so uh i was, I was trying to show you but my screen share is not sherry enough right now so um if you go to dabblewriter.com slash downloads you can get a desktop app which is the exact same thing as the web app but in its own separate window uh, which can be nice if you want to focus and then you can close the browser down and not have uh, so much um, temptations. Uh, either way, Dabble uh, is cached to your computer and works offline. So you can go to app.dabblerider.com or open up the desktop app either way and be able to work on your projects while you're offline. Once you're back online, uh, everything will sync up. Uh, that's something that we didn't cover there's this, um, that your status of your projects, uh, there'll be a little floppy disk, which some of you may not even know what it is, uh, that will save, and it'll say saved locally if you're offline um, instead of synced. So that's the difference. Um, all right, uh, a couple other things with story notes. Uh, for those of you, and here's, we're getting into the uh, the advanced, um, portion of our, the tips and tricks, the secrets of Dabble right now. Uh, one of the things that is, is great is, um, you can, you can, uh, in story notes, unlike manuscript, which you only have, uh, bold italics. Oh, you do have this quote, um, Mark, which will give you a center italicized quote, which is great for, um, lyrics, poems, or things like that. If you click it again, It'll give you an indented. Um, it's hard to see that. Um, let's go ahead and create a few there. Um, so let's say this part is like a letter from Hogwarts or somewhere. Uh, and you can click this twice and it puts it indented there so that you can, can either make it italics or not. But that, that way you can have, um, have it be a little separated from the rest of the text. And when you export to Word, which we haven't talked about. 
uh, right clicking or clicking on the three buttons, you can export your entire document to Word. You can export just a single chapter or even a single scene, and it gives it to you in manuscript format. Um, so when you export to Word, these different quotes uh, styles are different styles in your Word document. So you, you can then format them however you want, and you can format it once and it will apply to all of them because it's a style. So those are the formatting uh, options in, in your manuscript, but in your notes, you've got a few extra things. Um, you've got uh, the links, which we already showed you, and you've got the headers. Uh, right now, uh, this goes to header two and header three, because you've got a header one up here. Um, but for those of you who know markup, markdown, markdown, um, you can also use those shortcuts. So uh, two pound signs uh, with a space will give you a header two. Um, and three and four, oops, space and five, all the way up to six. Uh, the six header uh, looks the same as the others, as the regular text, but it's um, but it gives it a little more padding. Uh, so so uh, there's oops, let's see uh, that that works uh, as well as again the bullet points. Uh, bullet points don't work in your manuscript, but, um, but you can have bullet points and um, Num numbered lists and things like that. So this is all great for uh, putting, you know, like the uh, um, properties or characteristics or whatever. Uh, and then so like uh, age, you know, 24 or things like that. So um, all of those. Oh, um, I because I'm, I'm doing work in the uh, story notes, I'm not doing a lot of writing on prose. Uh, I keep having the, the auto focus go on and I don't want it to go on um, while I'm doing this because I'm working over here and over here. And so I want to keep that off. So one secret, uh, clicking, hovering over enter focus mode or this, this eyeball lets you enter focus mode. But if you hover over it and you hit command on Mac or control on Windows, it turns into, in fact, you don't even have to hover over it, but if you hit that button, you'll see that the eyeball turns into a slash so I can disable the focus mode. Now that it's disabled, I can type and write. And even if I'm not moving my mouse, that autofocus isn't going to go on. As soon as I'm ready to um, turn it off, I just click that and I'm back to normal and I can write and the focus will go back on. Or of course, I can click it again and keep it on. So that is a one of those hidden secrets of Dabble. A little uh, tap of the control or command key, uh, and you'll be able to to go into to disable that focus mode. Um, cool. So uh, we talked about formatting in in notes, uh, including some markdown shortcuts. Um, let's talk about editing. Once you start. Um, once you've finished your manuscript, or sometimes before, or even if uh, you have a note that you need to remember to come back to, uh, there's there's a, several great features that Dabble has for doing that kind of stuff. First of all, we've got your comments, which um, which a lot of you know, which is kind of standard with online sharing documents. So um, maybe rethink. This phrasing. So we'll leave that comment there. Uh, and so you can comment things up. If you've made your comments and you want to get them out of the way, you can hide them uh, so that you're not having to have them in your face. Uh, if you double click on it, uh, it'll come back. Uh, or you can just click on toggle this to be on and off. Um, once you've um, fixed your thing, let's see. Let's change it to gloomy. There we go. Then I can mark it as resolved. I can always come back to comment history and see see uh, what what comments were there, and I can reopen them if I need. 
we go. Um, let's keep it resolved. Gloomy night is so much better than stormy. That's that's, that's gold right there. Uh, and we've also got highlights. Let's say this whole section. Um, you could use highlights for all sorts of things. You can highlight um, by, you know, let's say everything that Sally says, I'm going to highlight pink and everything that Robert says, I'm going to highlight is blue. Um, you can, you can highlight, you know, sections that you want to rework a certain color. Uh, you've got multiple colors to work with and you even have black for text that should be redacted. Like if you're writing a, a, a military novel and there's redacted text in it. Um, do note that when you select it, you'll be able to read it. But uh, other than that, it'll be redacted. When you export to Word, uh, the only highlights that will get exported is the redacted. It, it's assumed that black highlight is uh, for formatting purposes and should be kept. And the other things are for uh, for format or for editing purposes and not meant to go out to our to our exported final version uh let's see and then also for those big changes that you need to make there's sticky notes there's, there's the sticky note icon here um and you can go with classic yellow rework this entire section uh there's um, other colors you can do too. Uh, let's see. Um, more cowbell in this section for sure. So uh, you can drag those around from up top and also delete them up here. Uh, these uh, will show up on mobile, but they're a little tricky. Um, they might not be able to be dragged and deleted very easily on mobile. So it's something that just to just to note, and that'll be something that that's something that we're working on is making it work better on mobile. But uh, so sticky notes are for like those big edits that that you need, uh, and they will stick with the scene that they're put into. So if if you're looking at your whole book, uh, and then then they'll be there um, with that scene. If you're in If you're in a chapter, um, it won't. You can't drag it outside of that scene because it belongs to that scene. So it's meant to stay there. If you need it in a different scene, you'll have to delete it and add it somewhere else. Uh, something that we uh, haven't didn't cover is we're talking about uh, your your manuscript. Is that if you need to split or join chapters or scenes, you can split them like this. Uh, it'll create two scenes out of the one. Um, or if you need to join, merge them again, um, we're going to merge it with the one below and it goes back together. And that works uh, with chapters as well. You can split and merge chapters too. Uh, split, you can split chapters. Um, for merging chapters, you'll need to drag the scenes and merge the scenes. Uh, we figured um, that the scenes were enough. And anyway, so. Um, Talked about notes, touched on comment history. Uh, we do have the ability to toggle features on and off. Uh, if you, uh, and this is just for visibility. Uh, if you add a sticky notes all over your manuscript uh, and it's all sticky noted up, but you want to be able to actually read the manuscript, then you can hide those. Um, if uh, you, you'll notice, I've got my spell checking and grammar checking off by default. That's because as I'm writing, um, my my first draft. I don't want to have to have these things bugging me uh, while I write. I want to save it for when I come back. So um, you can toggle those off and then toggle them on when you're ready for them. If you like to edit as you go, you can have them on the whole time. So uh, that's great. Uh, grammar checking is part of the pro plan. So that's something to note. Uh, the premium plan, sorry. Um, in project settings, uh, you have the ability to change your project name to be different from your first book in your project. Usually it's going, it'll keep it in sync until you change something, then it, then it'll, it'll be 
kept different. Uh, and that allows you to, if you have a series, uh, most people just keep the name of their project the same as the first book in a project, which is usually the only book. But if you're doing a series, you might call it, you know, the, the name of the series, and then each book will be named something different. So that allows you to change uh, that project information. Uh, the premium plan, you have the ability to add uh, people, to invite a co-author by email. They do need a Dabble account, um, and they'll have whatever features that their plan uh, enables them to be to have. So if they actually sign up for Dabble and finish the free trial and decide they don't want it, uh, they can still be a co-author, but uh, just like all their other projects, it will only be in read-only uh, mode. They won't be able to change anything. They'll just be able to see it. So if you have a special someone who, you know, your, your um, beta reader, who's your trusted, you know, partner in crime, uh, you could add them as a uh, co-author until we have our beta reading feature coming out later this year. Um, so that you can, so they can, they can follow along, uh, read, read what you've got for them. Of course, uh, you can also just export uh, to Word and send it off to them that way. Uh, there's also uh, several different font choices for you uh, and sizes um, if you need uh, for your preference or to be able to, to see um, better. Uh, speaking of seeing better, um, there's another trick. If you hit, uh, the browser has a zoom feature uh, that we included in the desktop app. If you hit Command Plus, you can zoom in um, on everything in Dabble. Zoom or Command or Control Minus uh, will zoom out, and uh, Command Zero or Control Zero, depending on Mac or Windows, will reset it to to the default zoom level to 100%. So um, this can help you if you just need like bigger text for your manuscript, but if you need bigger text on the on the sidebars and everything else in Dabble, uh, then then use that zoom feature of the browser. It's really helpful. Um, in addition to some just uh, variety and some interesting things here, we also have um, we've got Comic Sans, which uh, some people have found helps them to turn off that inner editor as they write their first draft. Uh, and then we have a dyslexic font um, that was made for people to help help um, read uh, with dyslexia. Um, so there's, and then Times New Roman and Courier for those who uh, who want that more traditional um, export uh, manuscript format view. And you can change the notes as well. You can change uh, whether you've got um, indents for every line, uh, the book style, modified book style, or modern is more like a, a web browser with, with just space between uh, paragraphs. So uh, you can change the line spacing and you can change things for the notes as well. So, all right. Um, actually, was that all? Yes, that's all for project settings. A couple more things uh, before I just go into some of the uh, biggest secrets of all. Uh, we've got a help center, chat with support. Um, if you're on the premium plan, if you're on standard or basic, this will be email support, which is also great. We get back to people pretty quickly uh, on both plans. I mean, on both channels. Um, uh, we This takes you to Dabble's uh, forums. And uh, we actually have a exciting news coming out next month in regards to this. And we'll we'll send out some sneak peeks in the next few weeks here. Uh, and if you have some feature requests, um, you can click on, on request a feature and be able to go to our feature request website uh, to vote or or ask things. Our help center is full of doc, um, docs about how to do all these things that I talked about today and is super helpful. Uh, and um, I think that is that is kind of everything that we've covered. And we just went over um, an hour. I was a little optimistic in my in my um, in my thoughts on how quickly we'd be able to get through things. So let's um, share one last secret uh, that I think uh, some people already know about and love, and other people don't. If you're if you've got your notes open, and if you have a larger monitor, so there's room on your screen, you can drag this to get bigger, 
until it's big enough to fit a full size note on there. And then you can be able to have those notes fully visible as you write, which can be super helpful if, uh, you know, if you've got the, uh, the real estate on your screen. Uh, if you double click on, on the, the bar here in order to, then it will reset it to its original size. Of course, you can, can put it at any size you want. Uh, and you can even toggle the sidebars off. So you might not be in focus mode, but you can still have you know, either one side or the other open. And those are, uh, that's great for when you, uh, you know, your screen's a little smaller and you only have room for, for one uh, if, you know, because, because it's just not big enough. So um, trying to think if there's anything that I missed, any secrets, any, Billing profile. You can change your password to do, do, do. Um, NaNoWriMo. Oh, that's not something. That's something that we haven't talked about. Uh, if you're participating in Camp NaNoWriMo, which starts in April, uh, there's also one in July, and then there's the big event in November. You can authenticate with NaNoWriMo um, by if you click on this button. Well, I'll show you, uh, and then. Um, this is auto completing my username and password for Dabble, but that's not what you want. You want the NaNoWriMo username. This is the NaNoWriMo credentials. If you put that in and your NaNoWriMo password and authenticate, then you will be able to um, have, choose a certain project to be your NaNoWriMo project. Uh, you'll have to set it up on their website as well. And then those two projects will be linked. And as you type every five minutes or, you know, once you, uh, once you're ready to close the browser, um, it will sync that word count with NaNoWriMo for you. So you don't have to go to NaNoWriMo's website and, and enter in the word count. Um, you'll even get a nice little badge here that shows the NaNoWriMo, um, logo and, or the, the badge for that year. And so, uh, so yeah, that, that's a great uh, little feature that's, that's people found super helpful. And, um, and yeah, I'm just, I'm excited. I'm so glad that you guys are all here and I'm excited that you've uh, been able to come. Um, hopefully uh, your questions have been answered as we've gone. Uh, Robert, is there anything, I'm, I'm looking at the chat now, I've been uh, just on the, the other tab, but is there anything that we need to uh, answer that hasn't been answered yet? Glad, Sherry. Awesome. Oh, yes, word search. Great question. There is a word search. Um, because we try and keep Dabble simple, you'll notice we don't have a lot of toolbars. Uh, in order to even find bold, you have to select text, things like that. Uh, so, um, uh, oh yeah, a couple things. Yeah, so you can filter your project files here. Um, if I type in Stormy, for example, um, only the files that have Stormy in it will appear. Um, if you're looking for the sort of power or a character by a certain name or something like that, um, that can be helpful there. If you hit Control F on Windows or Command F on Dabble, you will get a find and replace window pop up. And uh, you can just search for things. Um, let's say Stormy, for example, because we don't have a lot in our book here. In fact, maybe we'll go to um, Pride and Prejudice, it gives us a little bit more. So, um, Lizzie, there we go. Uh, and we can find every instance of Lizzie. Um, we can also, because um, we're looking in the whole book, uh, we can find in the, um, if I just click on a single chapter, we're just looking in that chapter. So if you just want to search one area or section, uh, you can change uh, what you're currently selected, or you can say find in project, and that will find Lizzie in the whole project. It's going to highlight um, the, the chapters or scenes that that name uh, appears in, 
And then you can also do a find and replace. So I could replace Lizzie with Liz because we decided that everyone calls her Liz with two Zs. And I can click replace all. Um, it does. It is something that is not undoable. So try not to uh, to delete a word. If I can I can search for Liz and change that later. But if I just delete Lizzie, it'll be hard to get back to it. So hit OK. Now I've got Liz everywhere instead of Lizzie. I could change it to Bob as well or whatever. And some of you who may be programmery, um, who might be programmers, we did add a regular expression feature in there because I know that's something that is super helpful if, if you know it. But otherwise, I would just ignore that. Uh, um, but you can match whole words, uh, match case, things like that. So um, yeah, that's find and replace. Oh, we didn't go through preferences. In preferences, um, you can choose dark theme or auto theme so that it will switch depending on your device. Some devices are, are auto. The default is just going to be the light theme. Uh, spelling and grammar, there's, you can turn that on and off. You can change the language uh, to a different language. There's even United Kingdom English, South Africa English, Canadian English. Um, you can turn off the quotes at startup. You can turn off holiday themes, which right now come on uh, in December, uh, but we'd like to add some more for Halloween or other things like that. That'd be fun. Um, auto fade, you can turn off so that it doesn't ever auto fade ever. Um, so you turn it back on in preferences, of course. Typewriter scrolling, you can turn off if you don't like that. Uh, when you're writing, uh, if you hit period, space, space, because you're used to that, because uh, you grew up doing that, Dabble uh, will ignore the second space. It tries to keep, uh, keep you from adding extra spaces. But some people want that. It's, a, it's not just a habit that they're trying to get over, but it's something that they want in their manuscript. Uh, so you can turn that off. Uh, you can turn off Dabble's Find and Replace so that you can use your browsers when you hit Control F. Um, you can turn off Dabble's context menu and use the browsers, which is this one. Um, prefer Touch UI. So anyway, um, you can, there's some, these cache management and data management are some more um, troubleshooting type things. Um, this shows how much data my browser allows me, allows Dabble, allows this website, dabblewriter.com to use, um, which is 274 gigabytes. Uh, that's less than what my machine is has available. The uh, different browsers have different amounts that they allow. They don't want you to, they don't want any websites to fill up a machine with, um, with too much space. So they, they limit it. And, uh, and you'll see how much you're actually using with Dabble. And, and this is for the whole website. So this is, uh, I've got another account. Oh, that's another thing. You can have multiple accounts on the same machine and switch back and forth between them. So if you and your significant other at home both have Dabble accounts, you can both be signed in and just switch back and forth with a click of a button. Um, exporting your database. Um, or just a specific project from your database um, gives you a file that is not very useful unless you're a programmer, but uh, to you, unless you know something happened, you can always give us uh, an, a file that you've exported and we can, we can re-import uh, any data. Uh, so if you're writing offline, I have someone who's shipping out, uh, who reached out in support and asked if Dabble will continue to work after months um, of being offline, even up to six months. And I told them, I'm not sure. <laughs> Browser, different browsers have different policies on their cache um, length, and sometimes uh, they'll export things. Uh, and so uh, I recommended that he export his database uh, maybe every day. Um, he doesn't have to keep each one. He can just keep the latest one. Um, but then uh, if Dabble, you know, stops working or, you know, everything falls, you know, he can, uh, if, if, the, if the browser deletes everything somehow, uh, he can give us the latest uh, export when he's back in port 
and be able to get all of the stuff that he was writing offline uh, merged into his account and restored. So, all right. Well, thank you so much for coming. Um, we do have a feature coming soon, uh, this next month actually, uh, which will uh, show what, what ways co-authoring still works. Um, I'm going to go ahead and leave this open for a little bit longer so that people can ask questions in chat and my team can answer you. But I'm going to go ahead and close this down. Uh, we're already 15 minutes over. So thank you so much for coming. Thank you so much for using Dabble. Uh, we, we love, love, love working for you. Uh, you're the best customer or the best, yeah, the best customers that you know, a company could ask for. Um, you're very kind and gracious, uh, even when we make mistakes and, uh, and we just, we love the work that we do. Um, Dabble, uh, is now at 10 people. We have 10 people working for us, including myself. And every single one of us is a, some aspect of a writer part-time or not. Uh, only two of us were not Dabble customers before we worked for Dabble. And one of us was me because I wasn't a Dabble customer before I built it. So. Um, so I guess there's only one person who wasn't a Dabble customer before they were hired. Um, so we're all writers and we all, we all love the, this community and, and love our jobs. So we're just so grateful to be able to, uh, to work for you. And we're excited for what we can bring to you in the coming months and years. Um, next month, next month is going to be a big one. We've got a lot of surprises. Uh, coming. So we're really excited to start sharing those with you in the, in the next few weeks. So, all right. Well, thank you. Um, and we'll catch you later.